when you're kind of like the doctor or the master, you're kind of, as the actor, you're, you're, we call it, you're incarnating the role. So they do really let you, it's, quite, it's, it's weird. They, they're, they're very specific about what they want, but also they give you the freedom to collaborate with the writer. And that was great on this job. Me and Chris worked together quite a bit to help shape the character. And you also get to help design the costume as well. That's the most exciting part, you know? They're like, how do you want him to look? Give a warm, long island welcome to Mr. Sasha Duran. Yeah. Hey. Come on up. Good to see you, man. I see you. How are you? I'm going to grab a seat and I'll get my, my iPad out of your way. Yeah. My notes. All right, you're on? I'm on. Oh, I'm on. Great. All right, let's, uh, let's get comfy. Oh, how is everyone? Yeah. Great. Thanks so much for having me as well. How many times have you been to, the, uh, to New York, Sasha? Uh, I've been to New York uh, a couple of times, actually. Yeah. I came as a tourist years ago. Yeah, for work? No, this was just to just, uh, come, come see the Big Apple, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, for a job I came yeah. to do. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no. I uh, did a job here a couple of years ago. Yeah, and I was living in uh, Williamsburg. Oh, okay. Yeah. Shout out to it. Yeah. yeah. W Town. Uh, I'm going to just dive right into some early days, and we're going to kind of go through the, uh, yeah. you know, the whole uh, madness that, you know, that, that will be your career. We're yeah. going to jump into it. Yeah, crazy um, career. But I got to ask, and I do this too, when I, inter I, um, I also get to, I, I'm fortunate enough to get to interview a lot of people in front of and behind the camera, and I always ask the same question. Okay. What was that film? What was that play? film or TV show that you saw that that's when you said, this is what I want to do. Oh, wow. This is it. This is the one. Yeah, all with Roger Delgado stuff. No, actually, this is it's a really good question. Um, mm. Two films, <laughs> you won't believe it, that, that this would inspire an acting career. But um, Grease, the movie. Okay. <laughs> And, and then Dirty Dancing, right? Uh, and I think it was because I start, before I started acting, I, started, I danced quite a bit. I, I, I've got noticed. two left feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I danced quite a bit, and I just remember seeing Grease or Dirty Dancing and, and then reenacting uh, the moves, you know, at home. And uh, actually, <laughs> with the Dirty Dancing, it was my older sister that picked me up like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, and, and but then later on, um, I did see a play in London with um, David Tennant. Uh, it was called The Pillow Man, and that was an amazing play. Uh, and that's really kind of in inspired me to continue to do what I'm doing. And David Tennant, you were inspired by David Tennant, and you end up playing the master. Yeah, that crazy. Was a, that was a lucky effing break, I know, isn't I it? Know. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So, but you you have been acting. I want to say since four. Child actor, would you say? Well, or think, 12 more, 12, I, I've, I think from what I've read. When I was four, I was doing, that's when I was doing Michael Jackson impressions. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. what I've read. Like okay. doing moonwalks, moonwalk in the kitchen with my socks and, you know, feeling like I could float. <laughs> but it was like 12 um, around Yeah, when 12 was when I did my kind of first... Actually, 12 years old was my first acting job as a children's show with Fraser Hines, who's here today. We've heard of him. Yeah. yeah. He uh, played my PE teacher. Do you call it PE here? Like physical we, education? We do. Yeah, okay. We do. Cool. PE. PE. Well, then, well, he's not the only uh, Doctor Who uh, alumni that you have in, in your... Re I mean, you, in the, in the course of your career, and I'm kind of jumping out a little bit, um, in 2008... There was a show called Wired. Yeah. And stop me if I, if I start talking about something. I Oh, wait, no, we shouldn't talk about that. But, uh, you know, there's a show called Wired yeah. with Jody. Yeah, with Jody. Yeah. So that's when you had first met and worked together? Yeah, that was the first time we worked together. It was this, this series. Yeah, series was called Wired. There was this crazy illegal deal happening in the show and Jody was the character that worked out that something was happening and then they were kind of getting her to be part of it. 
And I remember doing a scene with Jodie uh, in a in a, a food can uh, in a work canteen, and I had to come around the corner with a tray of food, and she'd see me, and I'd say, um, "All right." And every take, the director went, "Cut! Cut!" Stop acting! Why are you acting? And I did about 30 takes of me walking around a corner saying, all right. Yeah. And every time it got gradually worse, and poor Jodie mm -hmm. had to endure seeing Sasha, me do that. Look to your right. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that was go. the scene. Well done. Huh? Smooth. Oh, great. my God. <laughs> so um, and did you, at that moment, with the U2, where you're looking into her eyes, did you ever think to yourself, I'm actually going to be playing her in the Christmas of 2022. Yeah. Well, I knew at that moment, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, at that time, uh, I, I was so new, and Jodie uh, was, was known in the industry as being, this, uh, as she is even more so now, a, a very kind of well-established, on-the-rise actress. So actually, if you can see this genuine, ner I'm genuinely nervous in that scene, thinking, I'm standing with Jodie Whittaker here. Uh, and yeah, cut to years later, I'm... Um, did she recognize you? Her. Did she remember you? She did, and that's when it was, it was, our, it was a special experience. Uh, when we first started shooting Doctor Who, uh, we shot in South Africa, and I was given like 12 days notice, and I thought, will Jodie remember me? Oh, probably not, especially from not that scene. Uh, and, um, and then I went into the makeup trailer to kind of see everybody. Tosin was there, Man Mandip, and then Jodie was there in her makeup chair, and she just went back and she went, all right, mate, like that. <laughs> and I thought, oh, and she went, how did she go? She gave me a big hug. She's like, oh, welcome to the team. And she went, can you believe it, mate? You're playing the master. You know, and I, she was so excited. I thought, oh, this is going to be... This is going to be fun. <laughs> well done. Well, I'd be remiss if we didn't hit up on some of your earlier accolades, of course. Now, one of your earliest accolades, of course, I would almost, dare I say, be the, one of the breakthrough uh, roles for you. You owe to a poetry reading. Would you like to uh, elaborate my, on that? My poetry reading. A poetry reading. Oh, my God, yeah. Um, we deep dive here in Long yeah. Island. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> wow. It's very good research. Um, so I finished college, and then uh, I said to all my friends uh, who were going to university, I was like, I'm not going to university, I'm going to be an actor. And they were like, they were like good luck. And then nothing happened at all. Um, and I was in Manchester, I was working with my dad, uh, who had a business there, and it was just very quiet. And I didn't quite know what to do with myself. Uh, and I remember having a newspaper on my desk and I started, thought I'd, I'll write a song. Um, but I ended up writing some poetry. Never written poetry before. Started you know, writing loads and loads. Again, didn't quite know what to do with it. And then cut to about a year later, I got an audition uh, for a play called The History Boys. Yeah, yeah. Give it up, yeah. And, and in that audition, uh, I did... Um, I'm waiting for the... No, okay. <laughs> Me reading poetry like this. No. And um, I did the audition, and I did the scene really badly. And then the director said, okay, thank you very much. And then I said, wait, I've written a poem about the play. Uh, and they said, oh, hey, hey. Uh, with James Corden as well, yeah. Um, I've written a play. Uh, sorry, I've written a poem, and... Um, and I saw the casting director be like, oh no, what is he doing? <laughs> and I performed this poem, and I got the job, which was great. And then Alan Bennett, who's an amazing writer, who actually studied for my own exams, uh, he sent me a note saying, I'm so glad you wrote the poem, because that was what got you the job. So yeah, it was an amazing thing, especially after not working for so long. It was a job that ended up really changing a lot of things for me. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm stepping on myself. Um, that's amazing, though, because that, you originated that character. Yes. And then the play has been adapted into film, which you, of course, were in. Yeah, and then, yeah. I mean, it's been also adapted into like other forms, like radio, I believe? Or what was yeah, it? Yeah, uh, we did a radio play of yeah. it. Went to Broadway. We made a film. I ended up you know, doing 500 shows of it. We also... There was an actor in it called Richard Griffiths, who was in Harry Potter as well. An amazing yeah. actor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well done on that poem. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, good move. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, I've, I've uh, read somewhere, uh, and I, uh, I am a proponent of this as well. Um, you've talked about it's it's humbling to be able to work continuously, but there's also something to be said about taking a break in between projects. And uh, you know, I've heard you speak on this, like how you found that taking a good break in between projects has really helped with your dynamic. Can you elaborate more on that? Yeah, I think, hmm, it, as an actor, you're always thinking about the next job, and but it, I think it's very important for me to just have a break and decompress a little bit. I think I've spoken quite openly about this. Uh, before I uh, started on Doctor Who, I, I was actually taking a break. I wasn't going to do anything um, because I was struggling with anxiety. Uh, for, I'd been struggling with it for so many years, hadn't spoken to anybody about it. And I realized that I need to take some time to uh, speak to someone about it and get some help. And, but actually, by doing that, it end, ended up being like one of the best things I could have done. But more so, I did end up then doing Doctor Who, but I also got welcomed into an amazing team of crew and cast who were incredibly supportive that allowed me to do my best work. And then on top of that, I also was introduced to an amazing community uh, who've also uh, been incredibly supportive and also been open about maybe some of their own struggles with anxiety. So I've, I felt it incredibly important. So going forward, whenever I do acting jobs, I always make sure in between, you know, I'll take a break and make sure that I'm kind of looking after myself, and it also makes me a better actor for it as well. Yeah, well done. Seriously. Yeah, thank that's you. Yeah. I've also kind of, you know, you know, you forget as an actor, it's not just about the performance, but in between jobs, you're able to use your platform to get people to talk about their mental health. And I think guys particularly, especially guys from a South Asian background, don't really talk about, you know, their emotions or what's happening. So I do try to use my platform to, to do that. Uh, and also it helps me as well. It, re it, re it really does. It's, it's, I never realized it would make me a better actor b because of it. Something that I avoided talking about for so long. It's interesting, isn't it? That's why we don't talk about those things. We're almost ashamed of it. And then when we do, we're like, oh my God, it's actually, it's the most empowering thing that we can do. Well, segues are for children because I was also going to mention that I, I think it was during the lockdown and you would talk about being in a fortunate position to be uh, uh, to use a platform for something. During the lockdown, weren't you involved in something that, w that helped more uh, British Southern America, uh, Asians, uh, Southern Asians be seen more in front of and behind the camera? Yeah, I think you know, being an actor, you know, there's only so much I can do uh, as the performer, um, but I've also want to make sure that I'm representing actors from my background. You know, I've been very fortunate and I've made a conscious effort to play in a range of different characters. You know, I was, I was the first British South Asian actor ever to play the master, you know? So again, I'm using my uh, position that I'm in to also create my own work and also look at representation, not only in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well, you know, and especially with what our crew looks like sometimes. So. Yeah. And lockdown was a really good way of, for me to explore that in terms of thinking more as a producer. That's what I'd love to go into as well as acting. Well, that question was coming up. I was gonna, <laughs> I can just check that one off the <laughs> list. Thank you. Um, that's amazing and that you use that, you know, because when you realize you're fortunate enough to be able to use that to do something. Yeah, you know, definitely. Like that's just uh, to no end. Uh, before we move on to a, another character, I'm sure we're, we're all really keen to hear about. Um, I did want to finally say, ask about, and with your process, I've heard that when um, a first assistant director, as you know, does the morning meeting for safety and whatnot and talk about the read through of the day, but when you do set and safety protocols every morning, and I end every meeting after I'm like, hey, can you follow this rule and follow yada yada, I always make sure I announce to the cast and crew, please let's not forget to make sure that let's have fun. I mean, we're making a movie. Do you know how many people across, around the world would kill to be where each and every one of you is standing right now? Don't take that for granted. Let's have some fun at the same time. Get it done, have fun. Now, you had gotten some similar advice from a colleague, Matthew Sinclair, 
who had also had mentioned to you about, uh, gave you advice on making sure you have fun to ha add into your performance as well. Could you? Yeah, um, yeah it's, I'd act called Malcolm, Malcolm Sinclair. Malcolm Sinclair, I said that. No, and um, I think when I was younger, I used to get into my head about, uh, you know, what I should be doing and uh, get, maybe getting too technical with it. Uh, and it ended up restricting me a little bit. And he gave me the best advice, which actually springboarded me, which is to, exactly what you're saying, is to make sure that you have fun. So like with the master, you know, people ask me, did you look at research? Did you look at any other interpretations? What I had the ability to do, and which they gave me permission to do, was like a blank page and just say, do what you want with it. Like, bring your creativity and paint the colors uh, in terms of how you see the master. And, and that's, that's certainly what I did. But it's kind of what I've been doing a lot with the, the characters I've been playing uh, in, the, in the last couple of years is not being afraid to be, um, to be bold, I guess. Uh, the master, the choices you make in playing the master, bold is definitely, uh, we'll, we'll, and which we, we will get into. But um, so you get the, uh, let's talk uh, before uh, Spyfall. Um, you get the phone call. Yeah. Now, I, I also have it on good authority that when you got the phone call, you were in a reading. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you weren't alone during the reading. Talk about getting yeah. that phone call to play the master. So yeah, I was I was I was saying before I was just, I was going to take a bit of time out, uh, and then I was doing a reading a play in London with Peter Capaldi. Uh, <laughs> crazy David Tennant, and Peter Capaldi, you know, um, and uh, yeah, I, I at lunch I got a call from my agent saying, they're really interested in you, in you playing the master. And at that point I went, who? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, well, Wikipedia it. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, they don't even wanna, they don't even wanna audition you. They, they, they want you to do it. And I thought, okay, great. And I put the phone down and, and I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I'm not in the right frame of mind. And I panicked. Um, and then I had to walk into the re rehearsal room and I was sworn by my agent, you can't tell anyone about this. It's so secret. Because they want you to come in as, as a different character and then there will be a reveal on a plane. I was like, oh my God, what the hell? And I walked into the rehearsal room and it was so strange. Peter Capaldi was just like looking at me. <laughs> and it was weird, it was like he knew. And he just went, and I was there sitting, and, and I was like a bit nervous, and, uh, and he just looked at me, and he just went, he just gave me a wink. And I thought, whoa, what the hell is going, what the, what is happening? <laughs> so, what is, you know, um, it was the strangest thing. I've always felt like Doctor Who, in some way, which I never expected, has been kind of in, in part of my life, from adventure and space and time. I never realized it would be... You know, I watched it as a kid, you know? And then suddenly, it's like the, u the universe just goes, grabs you in a way that you never thought was possible. It grabs you and takes you into the TV screen. It's really, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to obviously be in it, but with adventure in space and time is really get an understanding of the behind the scenes and the people that made it happen. It was such a, a prominent show for its time. So many things were happening politically when it first came out. It's, um, it's a crazy ass show. <clears throat> yeah, well, it wasn't the first time you've had like, uh, who royalty eyes on you on um, when you're starting out with a new part because um, uh, before, and before we get deeper into the master, uh, I am very fortunate to be a friend of Mr. Wars Hussein's. Ah. Now, when you were, and by the way, hats off <laughs> to Sasha's portrayal of Wars. Thank and, you. I mean, and no, I mean, it was just uh, brilliant. But sp speaking of readings, it was dur the, during the reading for Adventure in Space and Time was when you first met Oris. Is that correct? Or was it where you first performed it, at least? It was he was watching with the first yeah, time. Yeah, I, well, just to go back a bit, it was, um, the, so it was the Queen's Jubilee. Uh, and, oh, God, again, I was thinking, oh, God, it was how things happen. Um, I was with my family, like my auntie uh, in London. We were rushing 
to an area in London called the South Bank to try and see the Queen coming past. Uh, but we couldn't, there were so many crowds and we couldn't quite get there. And I thought, oh, we're not going to see it. And, um, hey, all right, mate. And, uh, and then someone ran down from the National Theatre and said, oh, Sasha, you can come up because I'd worked there doing the History Boys. You can get a better view right at the top. Please bear with me on this story, right? So um, we managed to get to the top and we got this amazing view to see the Queen. She went past, we waved, you know. But at that, where we were standing was Mark Gatiss. And he was saying, and, and he was with David Bradley, and he was saying, and they'd already cast David Bradley, and Mark said to David, we're trying to find Waris, like, someone who can play Waris Hussein. And David Bradley went, there's your guy. Wow. And there's me waving at the queen like this. <laughs> but, and Mark went, oh my God, that'll be quite cool. And, um, I got an audition for it, and I thought, well, let me look at Warris Hussein, and I'm not sure if you see any younger pictures of Warris. We look quite similar. Um, but yeah, so I didn't got in contact with Warris, and we actually spent quite a bit of time together in his house. And I've been there. Yes. Yeah, oh, it's it's and, sh- oh, and West Hollywood, actually, in L.A. Oh, yeah. I, I live by it. His house in London, is a, he's got pictures of Elizabeth T. Oh, it's amazing. And he just brought out boxes of Doctor Who memorabilia, the original scripts, with his notes on and how he scribbled stuff. And I thought, oh God, I really hope he goes to the restroom just so I can steal all of this. <laughs> um, that was at the screening. Yeah, so when I did the reading of um, uh, Adventure in Space in Time, that was the first time he was hearing me play him. That's what it was. And he was sitting right behind me as well. It was so terrifying. And he just said to me, he just said to me, you need to be more posh. <laughs> That's what he said to me. That's brilliant. Yeah, it was amazing. Oh, well, well done on the whole, I mean, all of us who, uh, especially those of us who actually are lucky enough to know him, uh, it was just amazing work. So. Yeah, it was amazing. I remember when we actually filmed some of the f- first scenes for Adventure in Space and Time, and um, it's quite nerve-wracking because we were trying to get everything right and make the look right, and, and Warris was there, and uh, he was sitting by the monitor, and he kind of saw all of us dressed, and I was doing my first scene with Verity Lambert in the BBC bar, and it's when a guy is also in the bar, and, I, and there's a little look, and we, and we're all, dr- and it just felt like the 60s, you know? It was, they got it so spot on, and, and I remember we, look, we looked, me and Mark Gatiss, we looked over at Warris, and uh, he, was, he was crying. Yeah, it was really, really moving. It all came flooding back, yeah. Oh, that's great. And then, but you had done that, so they, we, you weren't, it wasn't by impetus of that, the master, it wasn't, oh, we, they were done separate, I'm sorry, I'm no, forgetting no, my no, time. No, Talk to me about that. Like, no, they, that, they, that it was done separately. Yeah. Yeah, they were completely two separate things. Um, I've just realized, I'm looking at this picture, can someone tell, why am I so low? <laughs> I mean, they even put a cushion under my bum, to, and I'm still like, uh, you know, um, so that scene was with David Bradley, uh, and then after that scene, we did a scene with Brian Cox, who was, uh, he played Sydney, Sydney Newman, and he's genuinely terrifying, by the way. Um, yes, okay, so they weren't connected, Doctor Who and Adventure of Space in Time, however, the exec producer, Matt Strevens, uh, worked on this, and then worked on Jodie's era, on Spyfall, and he, he's the one that kindly suggested me for the master. So, yeah, I, I kind of owe it to him, really. That's yeah. where I was looking for. I knew it was in there somewhere. Um, speaking of that, now, uh, so Matt Strevens, he has brings you on to Spyfall. Were you involved also in developing the character as well early on? Or uh, was it something that you just, whatever was on the page? Well, what's great is they, um, when you're kind of like the doctor or the master, you're kind of, as the actor, you're, you're, we call it, you're incarnating the role. So they do really let you, it's, got, it's, it's weird, they, they're, they're very specific about what they want, but also they give you the freedom to collaborate with the writer. And that was great on this job. Me and Chris worked together quite a bit to help shape the character. And you also get to help design the costume as well. That's the most exciting part, you know? They're like, how do you want him to look? 
Uh, and so trying all of that out and seeing it all come together was um, it's amazing. It's to be involved in that as well, yeah, well yeah. done. Now, about the, uh, well, uh, your history with who? Was there a fandom? Was there uh, a fandom uh, toward the or any earlier incarnations, or was it Research City? It was kind of, or it, you know, it was, I've, I'd watched it as a child, um, you know, like, like all of us, and it had been a huge part of my life. And then it kind of fizzled out. I, I never really picked it up again. Um, so it, I guess it was good because I didn't come into the show. I, I think if I was so an avid fan of it, I think I'd be so nervous. I think I came into it and approached it like I would with uh, any other role and, and in terms of developing the character and the, and the look, really. Is there any uh, contact, any chatting with like Sims or uh, Jacob here Gomez who had played the part previously? Or? Well, I actually, w I went on YouTube and Googled John Sim uh, and watched a bit. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to stop because I would have ended up just, you know, copying him. Um, I did, I, one of the things I knew I wanted to do was to really try and tap into the, 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 the craziness of the character and, and I'll also try and make it quite dark as well. Uh, I think that was one of my main objectives. <laughs> yeah, the scene on the plane, the, the big reveal, talk about shooting that. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so when, when I, I got the job, uh, they, I, I said to Matt and Chris, the writer, uh, can I send in a, a, a tape of me just doing the reveal? And, um, and I sent it in and they gave a few thoughts and one of them was like, bring it down. <laughs> Um, but they also felt that the way that I was playing O uh, in that tape, uh, I was possibly giving away that I was the master. Like, O was behaving a little too odd. So in my tape, you would I mean, you'll never see it, thank God. But I was like, a bit like, hello, Jody. <laughs> and they'll be like, yeah, you're giving, you're giving that away. So actually what I ended up doing is splitting the script into two parts. So all the master stuff I just kind of put away and just focused on playing this kind of scientist. And then when I did the plane scene, I was like, time to pick up the golden script. <laughs> uh, but what I did on that day, this is no joke, was nothing <laughs> like what they thought I was going to do. I think because of the adrenaline of the scene, um, so the way that we film it is you'll, you'll turn up on the day and we had this... Uh, set, which was a plane, and no one in that room knew, uh, they knew about the reveal, but they didn't know how I was going to do it, uh, and we did like a rehearsal for the crew, um, and then it just, amazing, you, you kind of put me in front of a group of people, and it just came to life, and I could see everyone's reaction, uh, thinking like, wow, this is, this is great. And I knew then, I was like, ah, oh, this is, it, it just all came together. It was yeah. great instinct. It was just know? great instinct, yeah. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was amazing. Yeah. I would be, uh, on that particular one too, I would be intimidated just working with Stephen Fry. You yeah. know, I mean, <laughs> talk about, uh, I would be, I, I, you know, the host of IQ, why would I, I would, I would hate to be engaged in a conversation. Oh my God. Yeah. I would sound like a blithering idiot, as I do now. <laughs> no, um, not at all. But, uh, that, yeah, that's, that's got to be great. Uh, had you met him before at all? Or no, no I, don't, I, I was more, I didn't actually have any scenes with Stephen Fry. I was just happy that he was in it. Yeah. Uh, but I had quite a, f uh, a bit of stuff with Lenny Henry. Of course, yeah. Uh, and I was quite nervous working with him. Were you, were you a fan of his uh, com the show growing up? Yeah. yeah. I love the Lenny Henry. And I had to kind of be quite dominating and intimidating. But he's a huge Doctor Who fan. He was I, so excited. Yeah, he, uh, one of his famous Lenny, his sketches, he, he does Colin... Call him the sixth oh, doctor. He, does he really? Yeah, I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah, okay, or, right. All around that screen in a second, knowing, knowing Stephen over here. Um, yeah, uh, uh, so I'm going to move forward a little bit more into the Masters uh, uh, timeline to the uh, finale for season 12, yeah. The Timeless Children, which it's fair to say that it's been criticized as being, uh, for lack of better words, canonically challenged. Uh, were you, um, and there was a bit of a backlash. I mean, did you, how did you respond? any of that or we were like look it's just on the page we perform, you know, yeah or. I mean the, the writers are the one that, that, that they're the ones that know the history and, mm -hmm. and as the actor you interpret it in your own way yeah. uh, but you've just got to go you've got to go for it and I guess 
I, I would get, it would be too complicated for me to kind of look at all the past and everything. I kind of, I try and what I, I do is look at the history and then just try and make it as human as possible. Uh, and that was the main focus for me throughout the whole series was really my relationship with the doctor. Um, and, and that's r really uh, what mattered and making it as human as possible. They're kind of like, you know, bro to your two brothers, brother and sister, do you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where it lies and we kind of know what it can be like with siblings and, and what, that. how yeah. that no that's great um, the uh, now with power of the doctor yeah we, we didn't see you for a while and then we have power of the doctor which was uh, one one hell of a way to end last year I'm not gonna lie to you uh, Wow, so you get the script, but you get it early on, if I'm not mistaken. Like, you had, yeah. like you were involved with, like, months uh, ahead of time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd worked with him. Um, yeah, I'd worked with Jamie, the director on Spyfall, um, and it was great to have him. Actually, he directed all the episodes, so we worked really well in trying to make sure that we were doing it justice. I mean, I was, at, I was uh, filming on another show, uh, and they did actually want me to be in a lot more episodes, um, but I kind of was like, I'm glad I didn't. I'd rather kind of come in on like the, <laughs> the big, big episodes. And, and I was worried that if I was to come in all the time, people would just kind of get a bit sick of me, to be honest. Um, so yeah, we, we, um, we, we prepped that script. And, and I, I knew in months in advance when Chris said to me, so yeah, you're going to be the doctor. And I thought, holy shit, wow, <laughs> amazing. Uh, but I was gutted because I was like, I'm never going to be the Doctor again now. So, okay. <laughs> and then they had brought back some classic companions. Yeah. They got to do some, a great scene, uh, great scene with Tegan and Ace from... Uh, yeah. You know, how was that? With it was the, great. Was you a sense of that kind of legacy on set? A hundred percent. Like, you, you kind of come into the show, you play the master, and then you leave for a bit, and then you come back in again, and you've got you to try and find it. Uh, and especially with the power of the Doctor, I wanted to try and do stuff that was a little bit different as well, keep the audience guessing. But then you're also doing it with the legacy of these amazing actors who've worked with the best of the best and the previous masters. And then they're watching me do a rehearsal and you're thinking, God, I hope I do it justice for them. Um, but I remember them saying to me, they were just like, you're crazy. <laughs> you're really unhinged and mad. And I was like, thank you, I like it. And, and getting to work with Jodie so closely and to share so much dialogue with her um, for her denouement, her character's denouement, that had to have been somewhat gratifying seeing that you were on that, you know, she was on that journey with you. Yeah, it was great. And, you know, I, I'm, obviously I'm playing the master, but as Sasha, who, you know, who was a kid watching it, you, you're also there on set seeing uh, a doctor f wrap up their era as well. You're watching it in the in in literally in the wings, and it was it was incredible seeing kind of Jody kind of saying farewell to people. It was great. I came in to watch the scene with her and the other doctors. It was it was really moving. You know, you're kind of saying farewell to it, uh, but knowing it will always be a huge part of your life, as it is for some of the actors here today. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that, that segues to my next question, and. I think it's a question not only on my mind, but on a, a few people's here mind. Do you hear Boney M in your sleep? Not only in my sleep, I'm hearing it right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about it. On set spontaneity, uh, planned in advance. I mean, obviously you have to have a blocking rehearsal now, so yeah. talk about the putting it all together. Who picked the song? Well, it, the song was written because they were gonna cut uh, into another scene and play the, I mean, I was just going to click the music on uh, and that, cut the lights look like it was in the scene. Um, we have the a lights. special surprise for you yeah. and <laughs> hit it. Um, and um, yeah, I just click the a button and the song comes on. Uh, but for some reason in my head, I read it that I dance in it. Um, I, I swore. It, and so... They were about to cut, and then suddenly I started you know, doing all of this. I think Jody's like, what is he doing? <laughs> um, and I think they just kept it rolling. And uh, well, How about while we're here, why don't you give us a quick live commentary on the, this dance? Oh, my uh, God, yeah. Dance. Well, one of the things was... Uh, <laughs> It was, it was so good. You know what? It, 
you know, you're the actor, but I think anybody, if you're in a huge room like that, with those lights, music blaring, you're just going to go, why not? I'm in Doctor Who. I've got what? Hey, even they're thinking, what the hell? You know, I tell you that, I don't know why, how I did that, but the next day I couldn't even walk. And how my beard stayed on, I don't know. Um, we did it in two takes because we, we had to finish for the day. Uh, we did like one take and another, and, the, and then that was it. I think the dance was a lot it was a lot longer, but um, bad to you. Yeah, God, it's, it was. Um, I'm so glad it made the cut. To be honest, it was. Um, but also, I kind of wanted the master to kind of, to kind of, you know, you never see like male characters getting in touch with their kind of feminine side a little bit and making it a little camp, you know? And I, I love that about the master, you know, his, I like the idea of his sexuality being whatever it wanted it to be and uh, embracing that with, by being Rasputin, so. Are we getting all the best moves or were some of those cut out that you wish would have made the cut? Oh, there were some that, some of them that are not for your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Rasputin's underpants were there. His sh his shirt was there. <laughs> we didn't know Rasputin wore a thong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, give it up. That was quite the uh, great moment for the character. And is there like and and about the masters portrayed? That's one of many masters that is portrayed. And that, now it's one thing. Uh, I was going to ask you the difference between between playing a real life character as with uh, Warris Hussein, uh, as opposed to someone playing wildly fic uh, fictional, like the master, who's basically a character playing other characters. How do you? Uh, what's what is the contrast for you? Uh, I think it's more for me. It's more nerve wracking playing a real life person. I've done it a couple of times with Warris and another f very famous journalist in London called Satnam Sangera because. You're telling a big part of their life, you know, and obviously in drama as well, it's going to touch on stuff that's very personal to them. Uh, you know, Warris talked a lot about his time at the BBC and being uh, gay and South Asian and young at that time and the struggle. So you, you really want to do them justice. And that's the nerve wracking thing because you, you don't want them to turn around and say, what did you do? <laughs> um, so, yeah, but actually playing characters like the master is great. It goes back to what Malcolm was saying. You're you're writing the history. You're like an artist with a a blank page, and you're getting to really put your stamp on it. I'm like um, this is kind of the way I work. It's like a kid, really. I'll sit in my room <laughs> with my jogging pants on, a little beanie hat, and I'll sit there with a blank paper and think, oh, how am I going to create this character? And you get to play and that's that's what I love doing and I think you if you maintain that sense of play the audience kind of get a feel of that it's not all, not everyone's going to like it and if I think if I try and please everybody I'm, I don't think I'm going to be bold I just do it from my heart I guess and you can't go wrong with that I think <laughs> I hope not anyway <laughs> Well done. Um, I have to ask you but, uh, one last on the power of the doctor. Just yeah. I have to ask about those contacts. The contact lenses. Yeah. yeah. Because um, there's a lot of the master staring, deep shots yeah. creeping into the master doing the, you know, putting the whammy yeah. on people. Well, that was when I was doing a bit of research. One of the things about uh, Rasputin, people would say, is, and he was a real ladies' man. And maybe not in the best of appropriate ways, but um, he had these amazing blue eyes. Uh, and so I was like, we've got to have that because there's something they say was slightly hypnotic about him. He was able to hypnotize you. And, and the master in this has the ability to do that. So, yeah, we got some lenses made um, and you have to have a, a, special, a special person there to put them in. And obviously I move around a lot as the master. So one of them got completely destroyed. So actually in that scene, I'm only wearing one of them and the other one's um, put on in um, post-production. <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, well done. Um, I only have two more questions for you, then we're going to uh, turn it over to the uh, patiently waiting audience. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, the first one I, I, I've got to ask, uh, is there like anywhere on the planet that you've been able to travel to that... You, that, that where you were able to travel to thanks because of the show or because of your career or because of the show where you were standing there and saying to yourself, I can't believe I'm standing here. I've always wanted 
because of the show, if there's anywhere it's taken you, that you just, place, wow. There's this place called Long Island. Um, yeah. You know, um, you know it, actually, going to each... One of the things when you do the Doctor Who, people will say to you who work on the show, is you'll, you'll get to go to these conventions or comic cons, you'll get to meet fans, and you're like, okay, but you don't really understand it until you're doing it. Um, and it's great meeting you guys and hearing your stories. And, and it, even today, because this event is great, it's really intimate, it's really nice. Um, it's amazing when you sign something and you talk to people about how they became connected with the show and it's always a really beautiful story uh, and how it then gets passed to the next generation and the generation after that. And Sorry, I guess it's not like one particular place. It's all of them, really. And I think that's really because of um, the community that is uh, that's, that make the show. It's, like, it's unlike anything like it. And even when I go and do other stuff... And on Twitter, if someone says, like, says something bad about me, I don't need to say anything because, like, I've got my security in the community because they're like, leave him alone. That's, What's it got to do with you, fucker? That's, that's actually, that's actually funny because I had originally got, I was going to ask a question, is there anywhere on the planet or some kind of event that you are able to go to, right? Uh, but thanks to the show. So you've just answered it, basically, this convention. Thank you. Wow. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then my final question for you. Uh, tell us maybe one, maybe three, I would like to say, tell us three things about uh, working on a, on a Doctor Who production that we probably don't know. Oh, don't wow. Know um, that would surprise us. Yeah, so... Or nice one, big nice one, or a few Well, things. it's funny, it's like... You, the, the crew, who are amazing, they've been doing it for so long. Um, and... Uh, I, I, whenever they have to put up the um, the telephone box, they're like, oh, I've got to get the tap. You know, uh, <laughs> and it's amazing when you come here, everyone's so excited about it. And they're like, here, here's a sonic screwdriver. Are you catching it? And here's a tissue compression eliminator. And you, you know, um, I guess one thing, um, it kind of answers your question, I hope, um, is I got cast in the show and. Uh, I, you know, the previous showrunner, Stephen Moffat, right? And um, I presume that he was still connected to the show. But when, once the era ends, you're no longer anything to do with it. I didn't know that. And I was having dinner with Stephen Moffat for Dracula. And he said, so what, what are you doing at the moment? And I said, oh, I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing Doctor Who. And they're giving me this... Thick, and actually, he wasn't supposed, he's not allowed to know anything about it. Uh, and so he was like, oh, are you doing Doctor Who? I said, yeah, yeah. They've given me this thing, this tissue compression eliminator. And I could see in his face, he was like, uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, and then I got, I got called into the exec, execs the next day, and they're like, sir, you cannot say anything about Doctor Who. I mean, I got absolutely eliminated because uh, Stephen obviously then called Chris and was like, oh my God, Sasha's playing the master. Oh my God. He's like, how do you know? Because oh, they really wanted to keep a secret. Um, God, they were, they, you would think like they were, they treated you like a tissue compression uh, was like a prop you had stolen <laughs> know, from the set or something. Know, exactly. God, that'd be terrible. Uh, which I have an good authority you have. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, I, so let's I, bring it on to uh, yeah. some questions. I will start with you because you just happened to be my eye contact. Hi. Hey, buddy. What? what? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you exactly where Hold I Hold on, fit. I forgot to ask your name. <laughs> Sorry. Can't, what is it? Taylor. Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Go ahead. Hi, Taylor. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's been an ongoing conversation that I never expected. Um, and, and I think only Chris has the answer to that. Um, I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I've kind of come in and played it in my own head where I, where I think it should fit. Um, but to be honest, 
I personally feel like I love the conversation about it. And I love people's seeing people's own interpretation of where it fits. And it's a real, real heated debate. Is it before? Is it after? Um, I honestly hope that it's a door that's still open for me that will hopefully be answered. So we'll see. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, one of the things was the, the malevolence and the anger. I always make sure that even though the situations are quite extreme, you know, Gallifrey's burnt down or... But I generally think... I try and make it in my head as human as possible for someone who's lost his home or has lost something that he felt that he it was his birthright. You know, he, he should have been he should have been he should have been the special one, but there's something the doctor you know, I think about all those things and think, if that was to happen to me in an everyday situation, how would I feel? And to be honest, I'd be quite pissed off. <laughs> um, so I kind of use all of that. And then on the day, I kind of hold on to that feeling, uh, and sometimes it comes out in ways that I never quite expected. It might be quite big, it could be emotional, but that's what I love about it, and I think that's what makes it interesting, because I think if I planned everything, it'd be a bit safe. But I always like, that's what's great about playing the master, is there is an air of spontaneity and, and chaos, but it always, it's always organized chaos. He's always got a plan, so I guess... Yeah, that's that's kind of where it all comes from. But it's re it's real. And what when you're seeing me angry or seeing me emotional, that's genuinely a part of me that is emotional. I think if you're going to do it, then really feel where that's coming from. And it's great that people respond to it and they say, "God, you're really crazy," or "You're quite terrifying." And that's because they hopefully will feel something in response to me in, res in response to watching me do it. I guess. Oh yeah, what's your name? Tom. Thanks, Tom. All right, uh, Mr. Marshall, hi. Hey, Dave. Well, maybe there was some pent up anger that I needed to. Um, <laughs> um, I guess how it helped me is it, it's very rare to be able to play a character like this that's so varied and has different emotions. Um, but I talk about it a lot. It's really the crew and the team behind Doctor Who that make it that are incredibly supportive of everyone that comes in. And it gives you this ability to make bold choices. You can never go wrong. And I've... I've not really experienced that on other sets. There's always a lot of politics going on, and you, you, go, you go away at the end of the day thinking, God, I wish, I'd, I wish I'd done a bit more. But they create such an environment for you to play and be bold, and, and, and if, it's, if it doesn't work, that's fine. They're really just kind, and I guess... You know, when I went to South Africa to first start the show... Um, I, was, I was in a South Africa, but I wasn't needed for the first 10 days. And in my hotel room, I was a wreck. I was so bad. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. And also, it's Doctor Who. It's such a big job. I didn't eat properly. I didn't sleep. But as soon as I stepped onto the set and saw how welcome these team of humans can be, it was unlike anything. And it just gave me that kind of like to ignore the voices. Um, but it, it doesn't mean that I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I went away and also made sure that I, I, I did the work, got the help that I needed. And, and, but Doctor Who was a real stepping stone for that. Hi, what's your name all the way back there? Eric? Oh, it's Eric. I didn't even see. I just saw a hand. Hi, Eric. Eric, I thought you were just going to sort of say I love you. And I'd say, I love you too, bro. <laughs> I love you, man. <laughs> Eric, would you two like to be alone? We could all... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, so there's... I can't remember it, to be honest. Uh, but I, I, can, can I tell you a funny story? <laughs> yeah. Um, when we were doing the History Boys... Um, uh, we did a pre- uh, for for two nights. We did a pre-show uh, of the eight eight guys and the History Boys. We did like sketches and stuff like that. And I wrote another poem. And um, and James Corden, he hadn't prepared anything, and he just said, "Well, I'll just host it. I'll just like it, it bring people on." And in the rehearsal, I did that poem. And uh, in the break, James came up to me. Uh, after the rehearsal, and he said, God, that poem was, it was amazing, it's so beautiful. And I said, oh, thank you, James. And then we, when we went on stage to do that actual show, before I came onto the stage, James Corden, who's hosting the event, said, and ladies and gentlemen, we have Sasha Dewan, who's going to do this poem. And there was about a 1,000 people in the audience, and he said... Um, Please be nice to Sasha because his visa expires and he's going to have to go back to India tomorrow. And the audience just started laughing. So when I ended up doing my poem, they were laughing the whole way through. James caught James and slipped the rug beneath me. I couldn't and believe it wasn't it. meant to be funny, I imagine. It wasn't meant to be funny. But the audience were creasing with laughter as I'm doing this poem, you know. So, I wonder yeah. if the other actors in the history of boys think they were going to get like really big parts on Doctor Who up next. Who's that? Huh? Yeah. What's your name? Oh, wait, actually, ladies first. She got you first. What's your name? Hi, I'm Shay. Shay. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, so something came about, um, actually, you know, you know the scene um, in the casino where me and Mandip are doing, the, I think something came about where, I think Chris may have also seen it, that there was a chemistry there, that, so maybe for the power of the doctor, the master would take her under his wing a little bit, and you saw her in The Power of the Doctor, he tried to do that, and it went kind of horribly wrong. And that all started from that casino scene. Um, but really, I, I learned a lot uh, working with Jodie. So The Timeless Child was a real, I didn't realize how emotional it would be for both of us. Um, and I, I'm not sure, yeah, we probably have seen, uh, we have seen that, but I, I, it was nice, you know, the master can be kind of crazy, but it was nice to delve into the, the emotion of all of that and the history of Gallifrey, that all came up from, from, from that, which I didn't know that much about until we, we, we did those scenes. So, yeah. Thank you. Who do we got? Hi. Hi. Oh, you're up. Hi, what's your name? My name's Emily. Emily, do you have a question for us? <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's a great question. <clears throat> really good question. I would love to work with Matt Smith, I think. Um, I think he's an amazing actor, uh, like all the doctors are, but I, just, uh, I would love to play opposite him. And also, uh, Shooty as well. I was going to well. say, so the smart answer would be to say Shooty. Say yeah, Shooty. Yeah, yeah. No, Shooty, definitely. I'd, I'd love to see how that dynamic works. Um, Companion-wise, um, hmm... Actually, like, Tegan and those guys that I work with in The Power of the Doctor, I wish I could do a bit more with them. Well, you started messing with them a little bit. Exactly. You know? I was saying there's so much more to kind of there's mine from that. Plenty you know? more adventures for them to probably have. They're all out there now. I love it. Hi. What's your name? Helen. Hi, Ellen. Go ahead. I did pay her, so... <laughs> Can you remember what character I played? <laughs> How do you forget Actually, that? that's my real life. Um, yeah, yeah, here you go. <laughs> at, uh, 
No, I didn't. Yeah, that would be amazing. Well, wouldn't you guys like to see like a master spin-off with all the masters coming back? Wouldn't that be nice? Keep, keep spreading that out, yeah? Because people listen and, you know... Yeah, I mean, while we're plugging, uh, we're, we're, I, well, I want to plug one thing for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. I'll, by the way, for some more of his recent work, if you haven't seen Wolf yet, oh, yeah. please see Wolf. Uh, and for those of you who are very keen, might catch a Doctor Who reference or two. So just a shameless plug for you there. Yeah, there you thank you. See you, Wolf. Uh, I'll take one more question. I guess it's going to be, I'll, I'm going to, he's got, he had his hand up first. I'm sorry, go for it, buddy. Um, I will miss probably Jody, everybody really, and, and working with the crew, and Cardiff where we shoot it. it, it that I, I was really sad to say, kind of say goodbye to all of that. I felt really comfortable there. So yeah, I guess that's the thing I'll miss the most, and the collaboration that I have with the writers, and I'll certainly d miss the character. Uh, I kind of feel that maybe we've not seen uh, the full version of my incarnation. I think I always like to keep the audience guessing, and you know, if I was to ever come back, I think it'll be in a way that you never expected. I never want the audience to feel, go, yeah, yeah, we've seen his version now. I think I, I've got, I've got more, a few more tricks on my sleeve, so you wait. We, we'd love to see it. And we really appreciated having you here. Thank you so right, much. Let's give it up for Thank Sasha you. Dewan. Very well done. Go see him at his table. Go, go get a photo with him. He'll be here uh, tomorrow as well. Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.